Turning now to the United Kingdom's Accession Council today, formally proclaiming Queen Elizabeth's son, Charles III, the new king. Now, the event marks a series of formalities that will unfold over the next several days leading up to the Queen's funeral. ABC's Faith Obube is in London with details. New details of the preparations underway for Queen Elizabeth's final journey. Buckingham Palace revealing Britain's longest reigning monarch will lie in state for four days at Westminster Hall before her funeral on September 19th. Saturday, members of the royal family seen in Windsor. The new prince and princess of Wales sharing a quiet moment of reflection with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. All four taking a close look at floral tributes piling outside the castle. I think everybody hopes that the death of Queen Elizabeth will hopefully be able to start to repair some of the damage and divisions that have happened in the royal family between the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry and Meghan and, and the rest of the senior royals. Well-wishers like Annie got a chance to speak with the senior royals. They were every bit as lovely as you would hope. I think a bit subdued but just so thankful I think that so many people were here to support them, all of them. King Charles III and Queen Camilla also greeted well-wishers before entering Clarence House. Earlier in the day, the pageantry of royal traditions on full display. For the first time in history, the world getting a front row seat to a new British monarch formally ascending the throne. Prince and William, Queen Camilla and other members of the Accession Council formally proclaiming Charles the III the king. Charles signing the proclamation at St. James Palace, his coronation day not yet revealed. Across London, gun salutes firing off. For the first time since 1952, the national anthem now with the phrase, God save the king. Right now, the Queen's coffin is still at Mount Mora Castle, but it'll be moved to the palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh tomorrow.